Hiya, it's Linda Lee, and I've been doing some uh, avocado water treatment to some copy paper, and I'm going to do some more. Uh, usually I do it in my living room on the coffee table, um, but I'm going to uh, do some here in my studio so you can kind of see me do it. Uh, you know that I kind of have my own my, a little spray technique that I use. Um, basically I have my prepared avocado water in a spray bottle. This is a bottle that I actually got from one of my YouTube subscribers and I got two of them. One of them I've been using with the alum water with my eco dyes and this one has avocado water in it so far. As soon as I get through the avocado water I'm going to do some coffee treatment with it. Um, but we want I wanted to get some of this done first and you know my little spray technique is basically I just spray um, but I've been rubbing it with my fingers too so that I get a little bit less speckle and more overall coverage I guess I probably should have sprayed the other side first because of that glue spot but it's kind of like finger painting you know I just kind of go back and forth um, the avocado water I prepared with pits only so it, it is a little more saturated in color. Um, I also did cheat a little bit. I put two drops of red food coloring in, which really didn't do much, um, but it did do a little bit. So it does have a little bit more saturation of color than it normally would otherwise. Um, I just wanna, and then I just set it aside to dry. So I just wanted to do a few envelopes and we'll do some paper. Um, as you know, I usually cover my desk um, with, you know, some work surface paper. Underneath it's just glass, so I don't have to worry about protecting wood or anything because I have a piece of glass over top of the wood. But yeah. This is my finger peen <laughs> with avocado water. That's what I call it anyway. So with the, um, I just finished my carpet bagger journal and I hope to have it in the mail in the next day or so. Um, it's actually going all the way out to Quebec, or excuse me, British Columbia. So Vancouver area. And I've already got some interest in someone wanting another journal, which is very cool. Uh, I do think I do have to uh, wait before I really truly start it though, because I still haven't done my taxes. And that's a problem <laughs> if I don't get them done. Uh, with the whole COVID thing, they did extend you know, having to get your taxes done. Um, but I haven't done anything other than put everything in a pile. So I do need to take care of that. So I'll probably do that before I really start this next journal. This cool though. I do this with coffee too. So when I don't want to, you know, heat up the apartment, the um, temperature outside right now is like 96 degrees, and I don't want to turn on the oven. So rather than do that, I just take out the spray bottle. I do have some eco dye on the stove right now. So that pot, um, I just turned it off from the boil, so I just kind of let it sit and cool naturally. Uh, when I get impatient, I run cold water through it, um, but I don't want to do that because I didn't use anything that would give it any real strong coloring. And, um, I'm a little nervous that it's not going to have much of a result. 
I mom had some flowers. Remember I did the eco dye with her blue daisies that were dyed. Well, she's had a few of those left. And she did have some other flowers that appeared to be dyed, but when I was using them while I was doing the eco dye, it looked like they were actually um, simply painted, so they were sprayed. Um, so I'm, I don't know what's going to happen because I didn't use any leaves that actually would give me a lot of color. I used the ferns and hibiscus. I didn't use any of the coleus and the coleus is the one that really kind of puts out a bunch of color. So I only put like about a cup of coffee in the boil itself. So beyond that, it's just the plants I'm relying on. So we'll see. Once it cools, I'll probably set up the camera in the kitchen. That way I can uh, film some of the wet reveal. The last time I did just the dry reveal and a couple couple people reached out and kind of wanted to see more of the process but it's it's basically you know kind of the same thing over and over again so I didn't know really or didn't expect that the process would really be missed but they like the running water and kind of seeing what it looks like so I'll do it on camera so this is a really pretty pink it's been drying really nice um, it's just slightly slightly a little bit different color like I said, because of the uh, two drops of red food coloring that I put in this. Otherwise, it was a whole, um, I think I had maybe eight pits that, um, it's a big white envelope. But yeah, it was like about eight pits and uh, I just brought it to a boil and then let it simmer. And usually if you use just the pits, um, it's a bit brighter than if you use the pits and the skins. When you use both the pits and the skins, uh, it actually is a little more of a mauve color than pink. So, hear my thunder, <laughs> which is kind of weird because uh, the sun is shining right now. <laughs> So this is a great big white envelope, but it's got colored on the inside, so, which was a little disappointing. I didn't realize that it had, you know, like the security on the inside. I'll probably make like a little folio out of it. So I'm just flipping these on the floor behind me. Um, I have an overhead fan, and they dry pretty quick, even though, you know, it looks like I'm saturating it pretty well. So if I didn't want to, um, you know, cover the whole thing and just have it slightly speckled, then I would just spray it without using my fingers. But I kind of want more of the paper 
pink. So I'll show you what that all looks like once I'm done spraying a little bit. Also, I can show you I've been working. I worked on a, a little folio, kind of like a, what's it called? Prototype. Because um, I hadn't done one before with envelopes, and then you know just covering it with decorative paper and making pockets and. So I have that that I can show you too. It isn't for anyone in particular. It's just like I said, a prototype, excuse me. So, nothing really crazy here. Just throwing paper on the floor. <laughs> I have uh, towels underneath where I'm at. See? So, well, maybe I'll do a little bit more, I guess. And then we'll let this dry. And then I also, as you know, I always use my work surface papers to make things too. I use it for tags or background or I cut it up into pieces for pages. I love these bottles though. They spray so nice. <laughs> it's gonna rain. Well you never know though. It does sometimes it makes a lot of noise but nothing really happens where I'm at. For whatever reason, um, we just seem to be in a little spot that a lot of the rain just kind of bypasses. It either goes more to the north or the south. I mean, don't get me wrong, when we get rain, we really get rain, but... Hopefully we do get rain, because I didn't water the plants outside yet today. Got to keep my ferns happy and all the other shrubs for my eco dyes. So in the eco dye that I did today, I used um, a lighter weight paper. because I had run out of the mixed media and I had a uh, drawing paper that I had actually used. Um, let's see, One, two, three, four. we'll do two more of these for now. Oh, oh, I just dropped a bunch of papers. Story of our lives, right? Papers everywhere. It's funny too because um, I wanted to write something down a little earlier and I'm in a room that's full of paper and I didn't want to write on any of it. <laughs> I don't have anything close by that I don't mind writing on. Isn't that funny? clean this up a little bit and show you the little folio, my prototype. These are so pretty. This water turned out really nice. I didn't want, I was afraid that the red dye would give off too much red and it would change it from the pink 
um, but it really didn't. It just took the original color and it just seemed it make it seem like it was just a more satur saturated shade. So. Uh oh. That piece of paper rolled up on me. It wouldn't. Okay. I'll be right back here. Alright, so I'm just going to uh, clean this up a little bit, just wipe off the surface so it's not wet, and um, show you my folio. I'll be right back. Okay, so this here is the little envelope folio that I've been working on. And um, it's the first time I've made something like this. And uh, I made it from uh, this Prima pad, lavender, and it's two sided and cardstock. So it's really nice 12 by 12 paper. And so the seam binding itself is from Kelly Shop. This one is my favorite color, I use it a lot. But it's just uh, the cardstock pretty much supporting all of the different areas within the tab or the folio. So this is a large pocket um, and it's just kind of glued over top of the envelope itself. This one here is a large pocket. Now the open side of the envelope is actually down here. Um, but I didn't want to have to tuck inside because I'm actually going to sew in a, a little signature. Um, so I just put it on the other side. And then uh, if you open it this way, um, I have two outside pockets, a couple of pockets here. Do I have anything to... Here. So here's a pocket. Here's a pocket. Here's a pocket, and here's a pocket, <laughs> and then I have a little pocket here, and a little pocket here. Now you can kind of see um, the. I did get a two-inch uh, circle punch right here. I can't remember which company it's from. I got it at Hobby Lobby. Um, it doesn't have any. Oh, here it is. It's the Paper Studio. But something's wrong with it. I can't do it on more than one piece of paper. And that's why you, if you really look, you can kind of see an extra edge here. Um, because I struggle with the punch almost every time I use it. And it made like a little double extra cut um, on both of these little ones. So I can't do more than one piece of paper at a time. And I have to be certain when I push it that that's where I want my cut to be. So anyway, this is the little folio, but I thought it was kind of cute. I don't remember, I have to look and see uh, who it was that I saw make it, and I'll link it in the description. Um, but these papers I actually got from Staffing Group, um, one of the other mods. Uh, she did some purple paper for me. I didn't end up using it in the carpet bagger. I just I didn't have it in time for when I was finishing the the journal. So um, I just have it for future projects, and it's really pretty. Um, I believe she did it with Kool Aid and then some a couple few coffee papers. But um, what I didn't do that you kind of need to do is beef up because I don't have a uh, scoreboard but there's like a little a little piece that's um, a little binder or hinge or whatever you want to call it I guess spine and then there's a little one on this side too that's a little bigger that accommodates for the whole thing um, where I'm gonna sew this little signature in 
I didn't be fed up before I glued down these two pieces of paper. So I learned a few things along the way um, to beef this up before. Also, a couple of times I glued papers down before I actually inked them. So don't forget to ink, especially when everything else is inked. <laughs> and this is just the back, just plain. I think I'm going to put a pocket right here. And then it just all simply ties shut. I glued this underneath across the back. That was like one of the first things I did because I didn't want to forget before I started gluing papers on. But yeah, so this was my first prototype. Um, I just wanted to come up with uh, some kind of folio and I saw this one uh, made by one of our fellow YouTubers. Um, and I thought, well, that's kind of cute, you know, and it's nice to have. So if I kind of made a couple few of them, especially with all the queens that are coming down the line, I can, uh, you know, have some stuff kind of ready to make or ready made. Um, but that's all I really had. I wanted to kind of show you my, my eco, not my eco, but my avocado water and, you know, my rubbing technique. Uh, let's see if I have anything that's dry. So this isn't quite dry yet. It's getting there. But you can kind of see the color that's going to come through. Here's another one. <coughs> you just got to be careful of the glue. Make sure it's nice and dry before you flip that shot. Or you... So anyway, that's all I really had. I just, like I said, I wanted to show you my finger painting with the avocado water. And uh, share my little, this thing here. Um, if, you know, I mean a lot of you have probably already seen something like this. But if you want, I can, I can try and make one um, in a video. So just let me know in comments. Um, give me a thumbs up uh, if you want to see, you know, more like this in a video, and I'll be happy to accommodate. So, until next time, I will um, probably be showing an eco die. Have a great afternoon. Stay safe.